How can I show the binary representation of a number? That is, given a decimal number such as 10 or 150, how can I figure out where the ones and the zeros would appear in the binary formatted version of that number? Now, in several previous lessons, I've run this code to show a string that's formatted as a binary number. So how does it work? That's what I'm about to explain. First, it's worth pointing out that as far as the computer is concerned, a number is just a number. A decimal integer, a binary number, or even a character are basically all numbers. To the computer, they're all binary values, ons and offs, ones and zeros. So it doesn't really mean anything to convert an integer to a binary number because as far as the computer is concerned, an integer is a binary number. So when we talk about converting decimal to binary, what we really mean is changing the way the number is shown on screen. In other words, it's string representation. Behind the scenes, a number, such as 3, is a series of bits in a byte. When I convert 3 into binary, what I'm really doing is building a string that shows me a visual representation of what the number 3 is, as far as the computer is concerned. That is, the bit values, the ones and zeros that represent the number 3. In this code, I want to display the binary version of a character. Every character has an integer value, as listed in the ASCII table. So, for example, an uppercase A has the ASCII value 65. I can assign the character A or the integer value 65 to a char variable and get the same result. A 65. I also have a variable called mask which is this binary number. A binary number can be written in the C language as 0b followed by a series of zeros and ones. This mask has one as its first digit followed by seven zeros. This loop now iterates through the eight bits of my character, C, and at each turn it determines whether one of the bits is one or zero. And this printf displays that one or the zero. So, if the first, that is the leftmost bit, is zero, which it is when the value is 65, then that zero is printed. Then the loop moves on to the next bit. In this case, that's one, and that is printed, and so on. So how does it know if the bit value is one or zero? It's this operation here, C and mask. And that's the thing that does the hard work. Here, the ampersand is the bitwise and operator. Now let's see what the Microsoft documentation says about that. The bitwise and operator compares each bit of the first operand to the corresponding bit of the second operand. If both bits are 1, the corresponding result bit is set to 1. Otherwise, the corresponding result bit is set to 0. So let's see how this works with the first bit here. C has this value, 0, 1, 5 zeros, and another 1. Mask has this value, 1 followed by 7 zeros. Remember that each bit of the result will be set to zero unless both matching bits in the char C and in the mask are one. Since all but the first bit of mask is zero, all these seven bits can only ever be zero in the result because they will only result in one when both bits in C and mask are one. So we can forget about those seven bits. They can never be one. That means that the only bit that can possibly be set to one here is the first bit. 
If the bit in this position is 1 in the char C, then the result will be 1. However, it isn't 1. The bit here is 0. When the code ands those two values using the ampersand operator, 1 and 0 results in 0, because a bitwise and operation only results in 1 when both bits are 1. So this line now displays 0 on screen. Here, by the way, I'm using the C ternary operator, question mark and colon. This is a shorthand way of writing a test that says, if this is true, do this, else do that. Here, C and mask are considered to be true when the value is not zero. So when C and mask results in a value that is not zero, the character one is displayed. When the result is zero, the character zero is displayed then this line shifts the 1 to the next position in the mask. Here, the two right-pointing arrows are a bitwise shift operator, and the equals sign assigns this new value back to mask. So, at the next turn through the loop, all the digits in the mask are 0 except for the second one, because the 1 was shifted to that position. So now, when this test is made, only the second bit can possibly result in 1, because all the other bits in the mask are now 0. In fact, in this case, the second bit of 65 is 1. The ampersand operator now compares the two bits in C and mask. Both are 1, so the resulting bit is set to 1. This test in the printf statement succeeds, since the value of C and mask is not zero, and so one is printed. And so on for all eight iterations of the loop, testing all eight bits of the character C. Now, if you've never done this sort of thing before, the chances are that this is still not clear. So let's look at it another way. In this spreadsheet, I show the mask here. Remember, it starts with the leftmost bit set to 1, all the others to 0. And here is the bit pattern of the value 65, or the character capital A. My code determines this bit value by anding the mask and the character C in a loop. On each turn through the loop, a single bit is tested. The rule is that both the bit in the mask and the corresponding bit in the character C must be 1 in order for this test, C and mask, to be true. When it is true, I print the character 1, otherwise I print the character 0. This shift operation moves the 1 in my mask one bit to the right at each turn through the loop. Let's model this in a spreadsheet. Here, the char C has this bit pattern. As we've seen before, that is the binary representation of 65, which is the numeric value of the character uppercase A. My mask starts like this. At the first turn through the loop, I and this byte with the char C. Each bit in the resulting byte will only be set to 1 if both the bit in the mask and the bit at the same position in the char C are 1. They both must be 1. Otherwise, the resulting bit will be 0. So here, all the bits will be 0 in the result, because 1 and 0 is 0, 0 and 1 is 0, 0 and 0 is 0, and so on. So this test evaluates to false, because the result is 0, and a 0 character is printed. Now my code shifts the one in the mask to the next position here. This time, this bit has one in both the mask and the char C, so I have one in the result at that position. Once again, all other bits are set to zero because none of them are one in both the mask and the char C. So at this turn through the loop, this is the resulting value. It has one in this position. That means the result has a value that is not zero. When the result is not zero, my test returns true, 
and so one is displayed on screen. In other words, so far this is displayed, 0, 1. So you can see that this correctly represents the values of these two bits in the char C. So now I go through the loop again, shift the 1 in the mask here, and this time there are no matching bits that are 1 in both the mask and the char C. The result is therefore 0, so I print another 0 character. And as the 1 gets shifted to each subsequent bit position, there are again no bits that are 1 in the same positions in both the mask and the char C, so at each iteration I print another 0. Only when I get to this rightmost bit is a match made. Both the bit in the mask and the char C are 1. That means that the result is this pattern. This value, the value of this byte, is not 0. So my test evaluates to true and I print 1. The end result is that the characters printed on screen, that is, the string representation of the bit pattern of the char C, shows the correct bit pattern, with all the ones and zeros in the right places. Now, finally, for hardened C programmers who may think that my code here is unnecessarily verbose, well, here is an alternative version. This is not only more concise than the previous code, but it also works with bigger values because the loop no longer counts from 0 to 7, but continues executing until the mask itself evaluates to 0. That will occur when the bit shifting operation has moved the 1 beyond the end of the mask. You would of course need a bigger mask with more digits if you're working with bigger data types with more bytes. I leave you to experiment with this code in your own time. You may need to play around with this until you have the idea of how bit masking really works. As you can see from the brevity of this code, fundamentally it is really, really simple. Even so, until you get the idea in your head, it can be quite hard to understand. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new videos.